If you're like me, you'd seen objects like this for years and wondered what they were and how they worked. They tend to show up in museums or libraries or old paintings. This is called an armillary sphere, and it's one of the oldest astrological and astronomical devices we know of. There are records that suggesting these may have ex existed 2,200 years ago. This is a small demonstration model. I wanted to know how they worked, so I did some reading and I designed and 3D printed my own. And if you want to 3D print your own, there'll be a link either later in the video or in the text below showing you where you can do that. Because this is a small model, uh, just knocked up rather simply, it's not terribly accurate. I wouldn't want to base any of my plans on what this would tell me when the sun would rise and set, but it works well enough. So let's walk through the parts of it. The armillary sphere consists of a base with a horizon on it, meant to indicate the visible horizon, or what could be seen in the sky from the position on earth where this is set to. Inside of the horizon rests the rest of the device. Uh, it's made up this big ring inside of it. It's called the meridian and it represents the midpoint of the sky if you were standing in the northern hemisphere looking south or in the southern hemisphere looking due north. Rotating inside of the meridian uh, or a bunch of other rings. Uh, this largest one here, the most prominent, is called the ecliptic ring. And it has Roman numerals on it indicating the various months and dashes indicating the various days. It is tilted relative to the other rings uh, and we'll run into over what that means uh, in a little bit here. The other rings you see here prominently, this top one here, is called the Arctic Ring. The next one down is the Tropic of Cancer. The next one down is the Equatorial Ring. Then the Tropic of Capricorn. And at the very bottom is the Antarctic Ring. These vertical rings are called couleurs. And the one that runs through the 6 and the 12, indicating the summer solstice and the winter solstice, is called the celestial couleur. And the one that runs through the 3 and the 9 is called the equinoctial couleur. Now, if you want to use this to calculate celestial events, you need to first figure out where on the Earth you want to calculate for. You can see our little representation of the Earth inside there. It's mostly there just for amusement, I guess. As far as I'm concerned, it's not accurate enough to do any uh, measuring off of. But uh, my particular location is about 45 degrees latitude. So starting here at the equator, I count off this direction, 45 degrees. These are little marks are 5 degrees apart. So 10, 20, 30, 45. 45 degrees. And I'm going to set this right so that it is on the horizon. Like so. Not quite locked in. There we go. So this is meant to represent the tilt of the Earth for me at 45 degrees latitude. Now I find today's date. This is the 10th month, roughly a third of the way through it. Uh, and I'm going to put a little sticker on there so we can find that again. Now what happens is that as I rotate this, you can see how the sticker traces an arc up and down from the horizon to the meridian down to the horizon. This is actually representing the path the sun will take in the sky for me today. Uh, and if I have this thing calibrated right, uh, I'll be able to measure in degree marks here on the horizon 
where I would expect to see the sun start and then rotate it up to the meridian and see how high it would go in the sky for me today and then rotate over here and see where on the horizon it would set. Uh, I've done some calculations, I've done some test runs with it and it's, it's fairly accurate. Uh, what I don't think I have perfectly right are the spacing of the days here. Uh, but it's interesting to see that if I change from October where the path of the sun is fairly shallow to a date like the middle of summer, or sorry, the start of summer at the uh, summer solstice. You can see the path is much, much steeper and that it goes from beyond 90 degrees up from south uh, up to about 60 degrees. Uh, what is that called? Declension or elevation. Uh, you can do the same thing just by rotating this for different places on the Earth. So interestingly, let's let's go to the North Pole. Now we are set to the North Pole, and you can see that here on the summer solstice, that sun's going to go rotating around the sky, and it's never going to actually go under the horizon. But even for a date like today, if I go back and set this to uh, October, to a third of the way through the October, and then I set this back to the North Pole position, that already at the North Pole itself, the sun is never rising above the horizon. If I go to the equator, like so, then you can see that the sun tra traces a path almost directly overhead. And on the autumnal and uh, vernal equinoxes, the sun traces a path directly overhead. And then on the summer and winter solstices, it's actually 23 degrees north or 23 degrees south, so the day's a little bit shorter on those uh, days than it is on the equinoxes, curiously. So in addition to telling you how high in the sky a, the sun's going to get, or other celestial bodies, and telling you where it's going to rise and set, you can also use an armillary sphere to calculate what time an object is going to rise and set, at least relative to local solar noon. Uh, now a, a higher quality, a higher definition armillary sphere would have degree gradations on each one of these uh, horizontal bands so that I could see that, let's see, it's, it's we're here in the summer solstice uh, at this particular latitude. Uh, I can see how many degrees it is from there on the equator over to sunset and that degree, let's say in this case it is, I don't know, 70 degrees. And if I divide 70 by 360, I get the percent that makes up of the entire uh, rotation of the Earth in one day. And I multiply that percent times 24 hours, then I would learn how many hours before noon the sun is going to set. And the way it works out is that's the same number of hours after noon. Sorry, hours before noon the sun is going to rise, and then how many hours after noon the sun is going to set. Uh, so, with a simple device like this, uh, if used properly and if tuned well, I can tell the time of sunrise and sunset for any place on Earth, for any day of the year, which I find pretty amazing. There are other more complex things that can be added to an armillary sphere. Sometimes they have a, an arm that rotates the moon five and a half degrees off of the uh, main axis to demonstrate how it moves through the sky. And some armillary spheres will have stars attached here and there, but uh, this is the basic, uh, and yeah, I find it a fascinating device. Hope you enjoyed this and hope you learned something.